In our today's uh, mathematics class, we are going to look at a uh, Cartesian plane. And by the end of this lesson, I want to believe you should be able to use the Cartesian plane. But before we come to that, let us look at a brief history and origin of a Cartesian plane. Before, we never had this. But somewhere in the early 17th uh, century, we have got two mathematicians who are largely known. One was called Rene. One was called Rene Descartes. And another one was called Pair. Uh, the format. Now these two people independently developed the idea of what we call a number plane. I said independently. They never consulted but they came up with the idea of a number plane and the idea looked seemingly the same. In this idea of number plane, the precise position of points, the precise positions of points are illustrated using what we call coordinates. The positions are illustrated using coordinates. The points that we illustrate can be, can be plotted using axis, what we call axis. The points that we shall look at can be plotted using Axis can be plotted uh, using axis as they are as they are measuring uh, guides. So we use points. We use axis when we want to plot points on a Cartesian plane or a number plane. So this invention that the two, that is Rene and uh, Pierre, came up, it actually revolutionized the study of mathematics and provided a vital uh, link between geometry and algebra. It provided a very vital link between geometry and algebra. The number plane, also called a Cartesian plane. The number plane, which is also called a Cartesian plane, or some call it coordinate plane. So number plane, Cartesian plane or coordinate plane. This was named after the, this mathematician we call Rene Descartes. That is, we named the plane from his name which was called Descartes. So this is where we borrow the name a Cartesian plane. So how does a Cartesian plane operate? How does it 
look like? How do we apply it? A Cartesian plane uses two axes. A Cartesian plane or a number plane uses two axes. And the two axes, they are either running from top down, it is endless, it's top down, or it's running across, and it extends on the positive and negative sides. We can be having numbers like that. So we are looking at a simple Cartesian plane here. Now we find that if we are to use uh, Simba want us to use uh, the issue of compass and identify a, a few areas and see how it will be. Now take for example this is for the north, this is for the I think east, this is for the south, this is for the west. We have a one, a two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative one, negative two, negative three, one, two, three, four. Now, we are looking at this kind of a compass. And then I want us to try and trace the, for the path of this gentleman. We have a boy who moves. Let us uh, take it like every unit is a meter. It's not drawn to scale. It is just an illustration of a Cartesian. If we take, for example, a boy moves three meters to the east. 3 meters to the east from the origin. So 3 meters, 1, 2, 3. The boy reaches there, then moves uh, 2 meters south. 2 meters south. Southwards is down like this. So the first movement was this, uh, this way. So 2 meters, we are looking at 2 meters south. So this is the 1 to somewhere here so again southwards and then from there four meters to the west west is this other direction so four meters will be one two three four so this boy now walks down these sides to this point remember it is westwards and finally the boy moves five meters to the north 5 meters to the north. So we shall move from here 1 meter, 2 meters, 3 meters, 4, 5. So you'll find that the movement now is going upwards like this, and this is upwards. So to locate the last or the final position of this boy, you'll find that the position of the boy is here. That's where we have the boy's position. So notice that every, these are units. Every time the boy was making a meter, a meter, a meter towards the east and so on. We are able to identify. Let us look at another path of this same, same, uh, on the same Cartesian. Now let us have a girl. A girl decides to move, I'll use the black to indicate, uh, one meter to the west. Start by one meter to the west. So one meter to the west, I think this girl went like this, to this point. And then from there, three meters south. So three meters is one, two, three. The girl, the girl came down here. Three meters south. And then four meters to the east. So this will be one, two, three, four somewhere here. So one, two, three, four to the west. And finally, five, that's the east, five meters to the north. Five meters if we are from three, one, two, three, four, five. So you'll find that this will be the direction, this will be the position of our gun. Now, at Every point I'm locating is the point we are calling the coordinates. 
So let us now look at the real Cartesian plane and identify how these points are generated. Now, this is our Cartesian plane. And on our Cartesian plane, as we said earlier on, it uses axis. In, in plural, we use axis, but singular, this is one axis. This is another axis. You'll notice that there are thicker lines, and these thicker lines are the one we call axes. The thicker line that we are seeing are the ones we call axes. So this one here, it extends, this is the x axis. This one is the y axis. And here, each axis has got a scale that extends to the negative, from, the, from negative to the positive, from negative to the positive. The, where they meet is perpendicular at 90 degrees, and the point at which they meet is called an origin. So the origin of a Cartesian is where the two meet, or alternatively, we simply say that this is a point whose coordinate is zero, zero. So you can say that the origin, we call it the origin, or we just say the coordinate is zero, zero. We shall be illustrating how these coordinates are arrived at. When we need to identify or to plot a point on this Cartesian, it is always important that we first have to identify the point. Then that point, if we want to identify to plot a point, the point will be identified by the coordinates x and y. The order must remain. X and Y just the way they follow each other on the uh, alphabet. But the rule remains that we start with X and then the Y. So the X coordinate value is read first and then the Y coordinate value follows next. So here we have our Cartesian plan. We've seen that this is the Y axis it runs downwards. This is the x-axis. It runs across. To identify a point or to plot a point, we, the point must be given as in form of reading the x-coordinate first, then uh, with a comma, and then the y-coordinate next. And you put it in a bracket. Now, let us let us plot the following points. The point A is 1, 1. The point B is 3, negative 2. The point C is negative 2, negative 4. The point D is negative 3, 3. Now, this is our Cartesian. The first point we've been asked here is the point A. How do we identify where the point A is? We've said that first of all, we start by reading the X coordinate first and then followed by the Y coordinate. This is the X coordinate. It is ranging from zero and then one, two, three, four, and so on. But what we want is one, one. So X is one. So we shall identify where X is one. This is the point where x is 1. So along this grid line here, anywhere along this grid line means the value of x coordinate is 1. So 
we are looking at a point which lies along this line but the coordinate of y should be also 1 so we look for the coordinate of y which reads 1 y starts from here 0 the origin this is negative side this is positive so 1 2 3 up on 1 so, but we want 1 so the y coordinate of the value 1 will lie along this grid line so the question that comes now x is along this y is along this now where do these two lines meet where do these two lines meet you realize that when you move all of them will meet here so this point here is the point a so and you indicate it by saying this is the point a and show the coordinate one for x and one for y we have been able to plot the point a on a cartesian plane that is it similarly let us look at the point b the point b the coordinates reads 3 negative 2 3 stands for the x coordinate negative 2 stands for the y coordinate so we start reading the x coordinate value which is 3 so x coordinate it's move, it, we have 0 1 2 3 it means the point we are looking for lies along this grid line vertically along this grid line but where it will intercept the y coordinate of the value negative 2 so we come to the y axis and read the y coordinate you'll find that this is 0 this is positive with one negative side so this is 1 this is 2 so you'll find that where the L2 will meet is where we have the coordinate and they are meeting here so you'll put a mark on it and say this is the coordinate b and the coordinate here start with x which is 3 and y which is negative to put the bracket c reads negative 2 for x negative 4 for y negative 2 for x negative 4 for y this is our cartesian x here is negative 1 x here is negative 2 so we are looking at a situation here where the grid line negative 2 for x meets the grid line for negative 4 for y so negative 4 for y is down here so we are going to follow it up this is the grid line along negative 2 for x and this is for negative 4 so where they meet here is the point c with a coordinate negative 2 and another and y coordinate negative 4 close the bracket we are remaining with one point the point negative 3 3 negative 3 3 x is negative 3 y is positive 3 so we shall look at x minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 y is 1 2 3 so 3 is here negative 3 is here where they'll meet here this gives us the coordinate that we are going to call d which is negative 3 for x and 3 for y so what rule are we applying here we are saying that for each of the points a points b c and d for each of these points we've been able to write first the x coordinate 
and x coordinate is identified on reading the horizontal axis which we call the x axis followed by the y axis which is what the same time we call it the vertical axis that is the order of reading So let us look at a question. We shall still be referring to the same quotation. Let us look at these questions. Plot the following points. Plot the following points on a Cartesian plane plot the following points on a Cartesian plane Minus one, three. A is minus one, three. B two minus three. C two one. D Minus two, minus two, E, three, three, F, minus three, one, G, one, minus two, and H, Minus one minus one. So you are supposed to plot the following points on the Cartesian plane. And the Cartesian plane should have the y axis, it is labeled, and the x axis. And then the points, the first point, we are going to look at a few points, and then you will finish the rest of the points. Uh, immediately after as your assignment. Now, the first point is negative 1, 3. The knowledge, basic knowledge on a Cartesian plane is for you to know which coordinate comes first. And we've said the first coordinate that comes first is the x coordinate is read first, followed by the y coordinate. So when somebody tells us negative 1, 3, it means x is negative 1 and y is 3. So negative 1 is here and 3 is here. You'll find that our point A is here. So this is the point A and this is the point A in bracket. It is negative 1 and 3. The point B is reading 2, negative 3. 2, negative 3. Now, for y axis, y axis is 3, negative, and x axis is 2. So we shall look for x axis, which is 2, and y axis, which is negative 3. You'll find that where the two grid lines meet here is where we have our B, and the coordinate of B is. 2, which is positive, and negative 3, 4, y. So, this point here is 
this one here. Take note we are marking the exact point with an X to identify the point. The next point that we have, and I want to pick which uh, looks a bit uh, tricky. Let us look at uh, one, one with the extreme here. Negative 3, 1. That is the point F. Negative 3, 1. So negative 3 for X, that is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And the point 1 for Y, it will rest here. This is the point F with the coordinates negative 3 and 1. The rest of the remaining points, I want you to plot them yourself and see if you are able to locate. Now, let us again look at this second question. So write down write down the coordinates of the following points shown on the Cartesian plan. Write down the coordinates of the following points shown on the Cartesian plan. Now, the points are as follows. The point P, the point Q, the point R, the point S. and the point T. Write down the coordinates of the point P, Q, R, S, and T. So this time round, they have not given us the coordinates themselves, they have shown us the point it is you to identify and tell us that this point reads this coordinate. So let us start by looking at the first point, P. To read the, coordinate, the coordinates of P, the rule says we shall read the x-axis first and then followed by the y-axis. So when you when you stand at the point P here and follow the grid line until you meet the x-axis, you read the coordinate of x, which is positive 3. So we have a 3, a comma. And then st still at the same point, go to the horizontal axis, follow it until you meet the, the y-axis and read the value. You'll find that the value here is 6, so this is 6. So the coordinates of P is 3, 6. Let us look at the Q. Q is here. The X coordinate for Q, when you go follow it downwards until you reach the X axis, you'll find that it reads negative 2. So we have negative 2. Then comma, back to Q, horizontal axis for Y, we are, sorry, horizontal grid line which meets Y, it is reading the value of Y as 2, so this part we have a 2. So the coordinates here is negative 2, 2. We are done with Q. Let us look at R. 
When you look through the Cartesian, our R point is here. This is where the plotted point is. Now, to read the X coordinate for R, you'll follow the grid line until you meet the X axis. It is reading 3, so the X coordinate is 3. Have a comma there. Then follow it to see the readings for the Y axis. And the Y axis here reads... Uh, it reads a 5. And 5 is negative because it is below the 0. So we shall have negative 5 there. So the point R is coordinate 3, negative 5. The point S, if it is there, S, S or yes. S is here. What is the value or what is the reading of the X coordinate at the point S? You will notice that the point S, its X coordinate reads 2. So you start with it and write there, negative 2. And then the readings of Y coordinates at the point S, when you follow it, you find that it's negative 1. So we shall have negative 1 here. Therefore, S is negative 2, negative 1. We are remaining with one last point, the point T. The point T is right here. The readings of the X coordinate at T is 4. Put a 4. And then the readings of X, of Y axis at the point T is 2, so you come and write there 2. So we have been able to identify the three, the five plotted points P, Q, R, S, and T as P reads 3, 6, that's how we read the coordinate. Q, point Q is negative 2, 2. The point R is 3, negative 5. The point S is negative 2, negative 1. And the point T is 4, 2. So, let us look at application part of the same. The question reads, using the origin as one corner, The point A with the coordinates 3, 2 at the opposite corner. And the axis as the two of the side of the sides
So the question reads, using origin as one corner, the point A, 3, 2, are the opposite corner and the axis as the two of the sides. A rectangle can be positioned on a set of axes as shown. I'm going to show it. Its area is six square units. Find the area of the triangle if the point A is if the point A is A two two B negative three two C negative one negative four and D three negative five. So first let us illustrate our triangle whose one corner is at the, at the center of the origin, the coordinate 0, 0, and another corner is 3, 2, 3 for x-axis and 2. So we have a triangle here, a rectangle here. You may, so I want you to look at this. This is a triangle, a rectangle coming all the way that way. It touches the axis. So, they have told us that the, its area is six square units. We all know that the area of a triangle is length times breadth, or length times width. Length reads one, two, three units. Breadth reads two units, that is one, two. So, the area of this triangle is 3 times 2, which is 6 units, square units. Now they have asked, find the area of the, the, sorry, find the area of the rectangle, not triangle. Find the area of rectangle if the point a is 2, 2. So let us look at where 2, 2 is. If the point A, initially A was here. If the point A was here, then we would have our, our rectangle being this. So it would be this. The black one here. So this is where we have the point A. You realize that the area, we have to find the area. The area here will be 2 x-axis and 2 y-axis. So 2 times 2 gives us 4. So for this particular part, you'll have your area as 2 units times 2 units, which gives us 4 square units. Supposing our corner, the opposite corner of of A was negative 3, 2. We would count negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. It would be here. So our rectangle, our triangle, our rectangle would change and occupy this space. So you realize that this is our, it is occupying this space. The rectangle base is 3 units, 1, 2, 3, and the height is 1, 2. So to get the area of this rectangle here, it is 3 multiplied by 2, and this one will give us 6 square units. Because the base is 3, and the height is 2. The Third is negative 1, negative 4. Our rectangle, if this is the center of uh, one corner, the opposite corner is, neg is, three, sorry, is negative 1, which is here, 
and negative 4. So it's going to be somewhere here. So you'll find that this is our A here. So our rectangle will cover right from here. It will follow this line down, then comes here and goes back. So what they are asking us to find the area is this one here. The base here, we have our base or width as one unit and the, the length is four units. So to get the area here is one times four. So this will give us four square units. Four square units because the width is one and the length is four units. The last one is the point A is 3, negative 5. 3 is on the positive side, 1, 2, 3, and negative 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. So our rectangle is bigger, so I'll use a, our rectangle will come all the way to this part. And then across. So this is where the rectangle formed. And then that. So when we look at the one corner was this, the opposite corner was this point. So the area they are looking for is this large area, this one here. And for this area, the width is 1, 2, 3. And the length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the area will be, that is the length which is 5 units, multiply by the width which is 3. You'll get your answer as 15 square units. 15 square units. So, today you should have been able to know that we can plot a point on a Cartesian plane and we name those plotted points by giving them the coordinates, looking at the what value do they carry on the y, on the x coordinate first, followed by the readings of the y uh, coordinate. So with this, we come to the end of our lesson on the Cartesian plane. Thank you.